Hello everybody, this is Lucy from the blog paperglitterglue.com and I just wanted to show you some cool stuff about making this little railway, railway house. I just love the texture on the roof and that's what I'm going to show you today. But first I wanted to show you a few other houses I've made that have really cool roofs. This is called Faded Mansion and it has um, shingles. These are from Tim Holtz. Uh, village rooftops, but it makes just a great roof and it just adds great detail to the house. Here is one of my latest houses. This is the Sea Worn Beach House and it has a rusted roof. That's just metallic tape with alcohol ink I'm trying to make it look like an old, old beach house that's been, been out in the sun for a long time. And then I've got another really cool one I made last year with these Tim Holtz embosslets. Um, these are embossing folders. They cut and emboss and it just makes a great detail on this kind of spooky Halloween house. So, so, but I wanted to show you just kind of an easy way to add shingles to a roof. And the easiest way is to do it before the roof is adhered to the house. When you wait until, if you add, if the the roof is already adhered. Sometimes the shingles slide and it's hard to line them up straight so it's very difficult. So it's much easier if you have a simple roof to go ahead and add the shingles before you glue the roof piece on the house. And for this pattern I call it the railway house because a friend of mine asked me to make a pattern for his uh, railway scenery, his railroad scenery for in scale Railroads, and I think they're smaller little railroad, little um, little train sets, and so the house needed to be smaller. So this house is three inches wide, two, three inches across the front, two inches deep. So it's for me, it's a relatively small house. Okay, and so I made a pattern, and I also made a pattern for the shingles. So there are two different shingles. This one has a complete shingle on each end, and this one has a half shingle. So when you stagger them, they line up nicely and make this neat pattern. So I also like the chimneys, the, two, the dual chimneys on the back, the two chimneys. So I want to show you how to fit that in. So I've marked it already. I want the chimneys to sit at three-fourths of an inch up and about a an half an inch um, inside the roof area. So I'll start with one of my strips uh, after I apply my favorite glue. I love this glue. Fast Grab Tacky Glue. Aileen's Fast Grab. And what I like about it, it's just so thick. When you're adhering strips, it tends to hold it so much nicer than if you if you use a thinner glue, you really have to wait a minute for it to get tacky. You do not have to wait for this glue to get tacky. It adheres really fast and all. So that's what I like about it. I keep it upside down because it's so thick it's hard to it's hard to squeeze the bottle. And in fact, I think the new bottles have them already have a top that you can just balance it on. Okay, I always keep a rag nearby to wipe off the glue which I inevitably have on my hands. Okay, so I push this first one in and see, I mean you can sort of tell right away it holds it. And I'm I make it so that just the edge extends over the edge of the roof line. Okay, that was a whole strip. This one's got a half a shingle. Just kind of line that up. That's one nice thing about it. These are designed to fit this particular pattern. See some ooched a little bit. Okay. Pull it down a little bit. Alright, so that was a half. Now I'll use the whole shingle again. Probably do four of these before I get to the area where the chimneys are going to be. Glue on my fingers. One more strip with a half shingle on each end. Okay, line it, see if it's lined up. All right, next, get the shingles. I mean, not the shingles, the chimneys. 
I mean little chimneys and I just put a big blob of glue like I said I, I'm pretty glue happy I want my stuff to last I I spend a lot of time making this stuff and I'd like it you know somebody to enjoy it or if a child gets a hold of it it's got a chance of surviving at least for a little while so big blob of glue and it's all going to be covered up by shingles so or really this is kind of like a slate okay, I think I moved I'm sure I moved my piece down a little bit make sure it's lined up okay and now um, now I cut some pieces to fit I've got my scissors that's a half piece so trim this one a little bit let's see how much will go in there and I just kind of eyeball it let's add some glue to our area beside the chimneys didn't exactly center them perfectly but you know it's not really a big deal Knocked them both out of place briefly. Okay, line them back up. Smear this a bit. Smear that a little bit. Smear this piece. See if our we'll do a test fit. See if it fits, and then it staggers with the the ones below, which it does. Just smush it in place. Now we can do the other end. I think that looks good, so I'm just going to trim it, like right here. I like that. And now, let's put a piece in the middle. Let's see how we need to do to stagger it. It's not what I meant to do. Y'all, I'm sorry. I meant to show you how to fit a piece in here really nicely, and every time I do it, I forget. It's the third time. All right, I really want a piece cut in. I'll do it real quick. So I measure where the chimney is, and you can make it a little bit big so you know it's going to fit. And just cut this piece out. We'll use those other two pieces on the side once we get this one in place. It just helps it stagger better. Okay, so it's not lined up nicely. I cut it a little wide, but that's okay. It also holds the chimney very nicely. And let's cut this one. I'm going to cut it so that there's a half shingle on the end to anchor this. I'm going to trim it a little bit. I didn't like that teeny bit of overhang. Trim it. Smush it down. Okay, now I need a piece over here. We see we got a whole shingle on the end, so we need a half a shingle. And let's see if, if I cut that. Yeah, let's cut this one in half. Smush it down. May need more glue here. A little more glue. I love glue. Straighten out the chimney. Probably be best if I let the chimneys dry before I did this, but. Okay, so we've got that. Now I think I had a middle piece already cut. Nope, that one doesn't work. Let's see if we can find a middle piece that works. 
Is that a good stagger? Nope. Get a whole one. Picked up a thing with glue on it. Okay. Let's try this. Let's cut this here. See how it does. Probably need to trim it a little bit. Do a little trim. Just a little trim. Pooch it in place. And then you just keep building on the sides. Just kid sorry y'all. So just continue cutting small pieces to go on the sides. And just work your way up. I'm sorry, I make sound effects a lot. Normally I make them when my cat jumps in place when he's not supposed to be here. I locked him upstairs. For the time being. So, I don't want to deal with cat hair and stuff. Well, fresh cat hair. And piece in the middle. Again, you can cut it just a little bit narrow just so it fits nicely. Whoops. A pinch more to cut to fit between the two chimneys. So that the shingles are staggered. And well, this will be the last piece. I'll just add a small piece here. And that's the way you do the, the roof line. You make these um, slate shingles go around, um, go around the roof line for the railroad house. But it just adds very nice detail, and I just wanted to show you that. Okay. So that's it for today, and it's Lucy at Paper Glitter Glue, and I should have a link to the Railroad House in my um, description on YouTube. Okay, y'all take care. Bye.